And before anyone tells me she's obviously Luke Skywalker's daughter, a couple things. First of all, Daisy Ridley claimed that Rey's parents aren't in Episode 8. She said in an interview that she knows who Rey's parents are, but she also said that where Rey is going is more important than where she's from. At the time of this review, and given that the movie is directed by J.J. Abrams, that statement might be null and void, but to that I say, then why in f*** did it take her so damn long to leave Jakku? And second of all, Luke Skywalker in the original trilogy never struck me as that irresponsible, so that is dangerously out of character for someone like Luke. One of the theories online seems to be that Luke left Rey on Jakku to protect her from Kylo Ren, and the First Order, because of Kylo Ren's massacre of Luke's younglings, and that Luke used the Force to wipe Rey's memory and basically give her laser-guided amnesia, because that's how that works. So she might think it's her family waiting for her, given that, like Finn, being raised from birth as a stormtrooper, Jedi younglings are taken from families they never know, or in Rey's case, one she never saw again. Though, again, it's a wonder it never occurred to Amnesiac Rey to go searching for them before now. And until Episode 8, The Last Jedi, explains that stuff, it really feels like Luke put her on Jakku in the care of dickhead Anker Plunt on purpose, with no memory of who or what she is and no way to get to him, and that we're supposed to believe that she's Luke's daughter. And I just don't buy that for Luke. I'm not saying I have a problem with the idea of Rey being Luke's daughter. She could be a Kenobi granddaughter for all we know. I'm saying that it's irresponsible for Luke to abandon any children he might have for his crusade. But let's assume for a split second that Rey is indeed a Skywalker. The question remains, why did he abandon her on Jakku? And why Jakku of all places? Setting aside why someone as honorable as Luke would ever keep the fact that he has children a secret from Han and Leia, neither of whom seem to know who the hell Rey is. Incidentally, there's a video where Daisy Ridley says that Rey isn't a solo either, but I haven't watched that yet. This is a man who makes it a point to always be there for his friends, even when it seems like the chips are down. A man who refused to abandon C-3PO, a droid, to be slaughtered by Jawas, f***ing C-3PO wanted to rescue the Princess of Alderaan because it's the right thing, and this was before he found out they were related, joined the mother rebellion to stick it to the Empire, refused to sacrifice Han and Leia to the Empire on Bespin, to the point where he goes off on a damn kamikaze rescue mission, against Obi-Wan and Yoda's wishes by the way, that luckily for him only cost him a hand, Kerr stomps one of the baddest dark side users in the galaxy near you, even after the revelation that he's the son of Darth Vader slash Anakin Skywalker, and when given the opportunity to kill Vader, refuses to kill him or kneel before Palpatine, and is mostly the source of Han Solo's change of outlook on the Force. Yeah, he was a hothead in the earlier movies, but as the movies went on, Luke started to calm down a little bit. Given the bull that Rey seems to have put up with on Jakku. I have a hard time buying that Luke would do something like that to his own son, let alone his own daughter, especially since he himself put up with the same bull from Uncle Owen and Aunt LaRue just before meeting Ben Kenobi. I can understand wanting to protect Rey from the First Order, again, like Yoda and Ben slash Obi-Wan tried to for Luke and Leia, though why she'd be in any danger is anyone's guess. When Rey finally treks to the Jedi Temple, Luke gives her two knowing looks in succession of each other. The first when he sees Rey, and the second when Rey shows him his father's lightsaber. Even if Luke did recognize her, that wouldn't necessarily follow that she's his daughter, or even that they're related. The more likely explanation would be, at the very least, that Rey was a student of Luke's when Luke was busy training a new generation of Jedi. Meaning that Skywalker not only recognized her as a Jedi, he recognized her as one of, if not the last surviving younglings. Or maybe she's a Padawan learner. It's kind of hard to tell what stage this woman was at in her training. Then again, Kylo Ren does have a throwaway line about how Rey was untrained, so maybe she's untrained in the sense that the Force is too strong with her and that she needs to learn how to focus. That would also explain why she's so in tune with the Force that she's able to mind trick her way out of Stormtrooper Daniel Craig's captivity. And by the way, I totally didn't notice that Daniel Craig was in this movie until I saw this movie a second and third time after hearing other reviews. Maybe with the help of Obi-Wan's Force Ghost, Luke was planning to train Rey, or whatever the hell her real name is, to tune her senses, before Kylo Ren went nuts and started screaming, LET ME PURGE! I don't give a damn what the explanation is, as long as A, there is one, and B, it makes sense. And while we're on the subject of Force sensitives, if Han theoretically has the Force, why doesn't Leia know about it? 
I mean, she's part Skywalker for freaking sake. Incidentally, I also think it's possible that Finn is force sensitive, or I have no idea how he's able to sense the destruction of Hosnia Prime all the way from Takadana. Put simply, the main issue with Rey isn't that she's a Mary Sue, or what counts as a Mary Sue, but rather that she's given an unresolved character arc slash character flaw the movie wants the audience to believe is resolved. And if Luke Skywalker had enough screen time in this movie, and I understood what his correlation was with Rey, beyond both of them being force sensitive, this wouldn't be a problem. Aside from all the other good things I mentioned, one other positive thing I can give to both Rey and Finn is that at least for now, neither of them is involved in a bull force prophecy like Anakin Skywalker was. Yet. Or at least, I hope. And oddly enough, Finn is the only consistent character in the film. I'm not saying that Rey doesn't have personality on her own. When Rey and Finn take joy out of the fact that they got away from the stormtroopers, and when Rey's telling Han that she fixed the hyperdrive, I buy it. I'm saying that the movie can't seem to decide where that personality comes from, be it her upbringing or her relationships with Finn and Han. Okay, speaking of Padawans, I've been ignoring the bastard long enough. It's time for me to address the elephant in the room, straight out of the First Order, an ignorant mother by the name of Ben Solo slash Kylo Ren. Yeah, apparently Han and Leia named their son after Obi-Wan. No, I'm not really sure why either. In the first Star Wars movie, Leia never spoke to Kenobi, and as far as I can tell, Han didn't trust him, much less have enough respect for him to pay homage to him. The only person who had any stake in Ben Kenobi's survival was Luke, and he's barely in this damn film. I have searched high and low throughout the internet. I've read a TV Tropes head scratcher page. I've read the 40 Unforgivable Plot Holes page on the Huffington Post, 20 more plot holes, responses to those plot holes, and I still don't get what Kylo Ren's damage is. As I mentioned earlier, Leia has a throwaway line to Han that Ben Solo had too much of Darth Vader in him, and given that he's basically the grandson of Vader, that's an understandable criticism. They sent Ben to be trained by Luke, presumably to set him straight, and I guess in an attempt to learn from Obi-Wan and Anakin's mistakes, Luke tells Ben Solo everything about his lineage, and Ben gets really interested in Vader, which is supposed to be the cause of Kylo's slaughter of his younglings, and why Luke goes AWOL looking for the first Jedi Temple. Once again, if Luke's supposed to be Rey's father, it's a little strange that Han and Leia don't know about her given his honesty with Ben, who is pretty much Luke's nephew. And while we're on the subject, Kylo Ren, would you care to explain to me where the flying hell you got your hands on Darth Vader's busted ass helmet? Also, and not that I really care, but what the hell happened with Coruscant? Anyway, so Kylo Ren is essentially a reverse Anakin Skywalker in the sense that where Anakin was trying allegedly to embrace the light side of the Force while being tempted by the dark side of the Force, Kylo Ren is trying to embrace the dark side of the Force while being allegedly tempted by the light side, searching out for Darth Vader's force ghost like it's Smallville's dark side, with little to no luck in the hopes that he'll one day out Vader Darth Vader, all the way down to wearing a mask. And by the way, it's a wonder the muff can even breathe under that thing, much less form a coherent sentence to finish what Vader supposedly started. No discussion, by the way, about how Vader was taking orders from the Emperor or what he thinks of Darth Sidious in terms of power level and ruthlessness. Nothing like that. It's just the dark side is more gangster. Vader was badass. I want to be like him. Move on. Yo, Ray. Want to learn about the dark side? The dark side's fun. That might as well be what he says in the movie because Kylo Ren won't shut the hell up about it. Which brings me to the catalyst for Kylo Ren killing Han Solo and going on his traitor! Rampage. Sorry, translation. Traitor Rampage. Now let me put my cards on the table. First of all, I don't buy that Han would put himself in that situation. Now, on the one hand, I get that Harrison Ford has wanted for Han Solo to check out since Empire Strikes Back. He doesn't seem to hate Han Solo, and as far as I can tell, he wanted Solo to die a heroic death. But on the other hand, I think it could have been handled a lot better. Not only that, but he ends up being killed by his own son. His son who assassinated Luke Skywalker's younglings. A man who's been trying to kill his new sidekicks over a map. Watching this scene is just cringeworthy. Did it just slip Han's mind how many mother this asshole is killed? I get not wanting to give up on your child, but right now his son is a near brainwashed serial killer. Murdering people over a map. Second of all, while I don't pretend to understand dark side force users and their ideology, what exactly is it about killing Han that cements your devotion to the dark side, or at least is supposed to? 
Apparently, according to the Head Scratcher page for this movie on TVTropes.com, Kylo Ren's ultimate goal in this movie in killing Han Solo was to become completely one with the dark side, allowing him to let go of his pull to the light, even though the movie just finished establishing that it doesn't work like that. In your face, Qui-Gon Jinn. And according to said Head Scratcher page, his plan backfired because he's regretting the murder. But my question is, why is he regretting it? Why would he regret it if he's planning to do this from the outset? And assuming his plan did work, then by that logic, the job isn't done yet. Leia's still alive, so why not set a trap for both them and Chewbacca and kill all three of them? Doesn't seem like he's thought any of this through. And in the climactic fight, when Kylo Ren and Rey are busy kicking each other's asses, why is Kylo trying to convince Rey that he can teach her the ways of the dark side? You just spent the last three days trying to kill her over a fucking map! Do you even Jedi? Well, I'm assuming it's been three days. Given the time frame of events, it could be six hours. Look, no disrespect to Han and Leia, but is it just me, or was Ben Solo born with a bipolar disorder? And about this map, where the mu did Luke Skywalker find it? And don't tell me it's because he used the Force after you just got through telling me that it doesn't work like that. By that logic, Snoke and Kylo should have found him years ago.